players. Um, I think that we built uh, a group of men and a team that know how to play with resiliency, composure. Really, we talked all week about having discipline to execute um, in crunch times, and uh, they did that. They just they had discipline. I thought that uh, our first three points came on them jumping off sides, and, and our kids were disciplined enough to stay on the sides, and we stole a drive there. Um, give Missouri a lot of credit. I think um, Eli does a great job, and the team's hard to play. You got to, I can't even say three year starter quarterback. I don't know if that's exactly right, but he played against us here uh, three years ago, and they've got tremendous skill and great size on the defensive line. So um, our kids played really hard. The difference in the game was probably a kicking game this time. And, uh, and Woodring coming through and used his returns uh, and some critical red area stops. And that's what games come down to. You know, he actually said it during the week, third down in red area, we would look back on as being major critical spots. And they played well in red area defensively, and we played well in red area defensively. And a great team, great games, what the SEC is all about. And our reward is we get to do it again next week. So that's what the life in the SEC is. What about all opening up? What about the uh, uh, interception of uh, back back out? Can you see what you saw on that play and how important it was? In the huge, game? biggest play in the game. It was uh, slow motion. We told him after the game we had to get a piano on his back. He, uh, he said he took out. He just knew he was going to score. He didn't realize how far he had to run. He was, he was out of breath about halfway. I thought Jalen Walker did a great job. Just a great example of how the discipline to not. Um, Block somebody or clip somebody in the back, and uh, they did a great job there. You Look. mentioned Peyton, but hitting a career long in a really big situation, just what, what do you like that said the fact that he was able to come through with that kick? Yeah, it shows we have a lot of faith in him, trust in him. I think the, 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 the toughest call I had all night was on fourth and five. You know, there's a lot of analytics that will tell you not to kick that field goal because a six point differential just tells them they get four downs, and you just invited them to have four. Um, but I thought there's a chance we might have another chance at a field goal. And, Three and three, but a big nine. But um, if we don't hit, if we don't hit the field goal, or uh, we hit it and they go down and score, it's certainly a tough situation. You got to have confidence in the rest of your team; they can stop them. Um, we got about half of that third down back, and there was consideration there on fourth and five to go for it. But because of Peyton and what he's been able to do, we uh, we kicked it. Coach, I think I noticed Kamari Lasser in the slot. I guess what went into the decision to move him in there, and what does it do for your defense to have a guy that can go do that? Well, Kamari's a, a, a a talented football player. And uh, when he first got here as a freshman, we had times that we worked him in the slot. We cross trained because he's a matchup, really physical tackler, a really tough guy. And uh, as we watched them during the week, we felt like we needed to have a weapon, uh, some answers in the slot. And uh, to do that, you got to have guys who can go out the outside. And you know, Daly and, and, and um, uh, Julian had to go out there and play because they made some good plays. They had some really close. The eyes and tough calls, and had some really tough back shoulder throws. And when you take Kamari off in that boundary spot, you open yourself to those throws. So uh, we think we have good corners that can play, and, and Kamari allows us. We're lucky that we have defensive players versatile enough to try to match up to some things they did. Why do you think this, this team has been able to make the plays to keep you guys competitive when you've had so many tight games? You know, I think really we believe in our system. Um, we, we, have, we have built a culture of competitive edge in the fourth quarter. We believe that we're the best conditioned and that we're going to win the game in the fourth quarter. We're going to allow each other. You know, I got goosebumps down my back when they went down there and scored. And uh, Cedric Rampram was yelling at the defense to run off the field, run off the field, we got your back, we got your back, we're going to be fine. Because they, they, Missouri put together a really good drive, kind of broke it down our throat and um, hit us on a lot of pass ball runs. And uh, said was telling those guys jog it off, we're going to be fine. And, a lot of the leadership out there, man. We got some, some really positive leaders. Kirby, in these tight games, is, is the locker room seen pretty much the same in, in terms of obviously you guys come out in the second half and, and you do what you need to do to pull out those games? Uh, look, all games are going to be tight. I don't know. Like, y'all are acting like we're having tight. I mean, tight games are what you do in the SEC. I mean, there's the margin of victory. It is hard to win. Garrison Rogers came out of music coach. It's hard to win. Make sure these guys enjoy it because they realize how hard it is, you know, across the NFL. It's hard, man. I mean, you're, you're going to get every team's best shot. And uh, I thought our guys played a really good football team tonight. And we practiced really well prepared for it. Well, I was proud of the way they played. I don't know if that answers your question, but the locker room's great. I mean, they, 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 they've been in these kind of battles.
You guys scored on your first four drives at halftime and ended up when you run the clock out there. What sort of changed with this offense, especially when going into the half, you had two three and outs there before then? I don't know. I have to watch it to see. I can't really tell you what changed. I, I, I know that we have a, a potent offense with a lot of weapons. We got a lot of guys that can use. We got a guy that can get it to them. We got good pass protectors. We got good run blockers. You know, I didn't think we ran the ball um, overly well in the first half or the second half. You know, the second half had some some moments, and uh, you got to be able to control lines when you can't live your life in second long all game. I thought we had a lot of second long. They won first down more than we did, and uh, Mike did a good job staying with it and sticking with the plan. We were, we were very committed to the run, and most teams would have abandoned it. Kirby, Kirby Carson, Carson had a couple of key scrambles. Can you talk about what that means when he's able to get those few yards in those situations in his poison in the second half? It's hard. Look at us. I mean, their quarterback was the leading rusher probably in the first half, and uh, it, it, it's tough on a defense when you cover everybody and he takes off. Um, their guy made it hard, and uh, our guy made it hard on them. The, the conversions he had with his feet were just – it makes you as a defense coordinator not want to call certain things. It takes you out of your element. Kirby, uh, Carson actually said he almost had to learn how to play football again this year since it's been so long since he's taken a hit. What has he shown you um, this year that maybe you didn't know before or maybe you didn't know before? What's he affirmed to you? I, I, I say it often because everybody asks that question about I just, I never, I always had a lot of confidence in Carson. I mean, Carson, he did all the things he's doing now. He did them in our practices. He did them against a 2021 defense that may have been one of the top three defenses ever, and he did it every day out there. He would go against those guys, and they'd be like, man, this guy ain't flinching. Uh, so I've seen all these things before. If anything that surprised me was probably his feet, because he didn't get to use those often in, in practices. You know, it's like you can't hit him, so he takes off running. It's like we don't know if he got it or not. But uh, his composure and his decision making and his ability to change protections and know what defenses are doing. I mean, he, you got to give him a lot of credit. The first touchdown was probably all he did. He, he saw something, made a change, and uh, did a great job. Sunday so line, go down with an injury. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think it's a, a tibia or a, it's, a, it's a fracture or something in the form. How do you feel like the linebackers, CJ and anyone else, got up there played after he got hurt? Good and bad. They played before he got hurt. I mean, those guys have played all year, so. We need those guys to keep coming and uh, keep growing up. And uh, they've done a tremendous job. And uh, got a lot of respect for those young guys. They've worked for this opportunity. And they go out there and practice every day as hard as they can. And, uh, and they're really good players, good football players. CJ and Raven are, are very talented. And they got thrown in the fire tonight more than normal. You know, do you like the preparation process for these games, or do you like the games? Which, which is more fulfilling, oh. fun, whatever? I, I, I like both. I mean, if you don't like it, I shouldn't do it. You know, it's like, what, what am I doing this for? If I'm going to spend this many hours and countless hours up in the office till 10, 10.30 at night, come in at 7. I mean, there's a lot of preparation to go. <coughs> it was fun, the game went down for this one, because it was a little more chess match with them, the way they're playing. They're not traditional. You know, they, they get in some four wide sets, and that's not, like, everybody's 11 and 12. They were 10, and uh, we got to do some different things with that. They, they, they create tough matchups. Uh, and they get the best personnel on the field when they do that. So I enjoy that part. I enjoy seeing the kids <coughs> play on game day. I enjoy the decision-making process. As a head coach, I don't have to worry about calling it. I just got to figure out you know, what's, our next, what's our next play. What's our next uh, way to get an advantage. You've matched uh, Coach Dooley's home win streak now, I think, with 24. What does that mean to get that victory at Sanford Stadium? It means I have a lot of respect for Coach Dooley, so I want him to keep his name on there forever. You mentioned that drive where Missouri kind of ran hard on the throw during the fourth quarter. Just what did you see from them that allowed them to have success on the ground? There's overall in that drive. The tempo. tempo. I mean, they didn't do anything that they haven't done all year. I mean, they didn't scheme us up. They whipped their ass. <laughs> Seems like they uh, might have wished a little bit in the first half, but it was zero. I guess what's the key to being successful or successful in offense, even when facing pressure like that? They bless us all game. I mean, it's what they do. They're, they're, they're aggressive. They come after you. They make you beat them, um, and they come hard. They, 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 they got three sacks on a team that we had not given up many sacks. And I think they had up three sacks. So they're very aggressive. You got to have answers. We work hard on that. They know that. They they know your answers. So it's like, as a matter of it's a cat and mouse game of you know are you going to get a better answer than they got and respond to it? And they want something else. Can you uh, talk about getting number ten Ole Miss and your old buddy Lane Kiffin in the next week? Yeah, uh, got a great team. I mean, I, I mean 
go to work on them tomorrow. And uh, a lot of respect for what Lane's done and built there. He's a tremendous offensive mind. He's gone out and they're playing um, good defense now, too. So uh, it'll be a hell of a matchup because they got a really good football team. Can you talk about what happened to Kamari when he went down? He just had a back spasm. I, mean, he was, you know, he's, I think he just wanted to get up and celebrate so everybody would cheer him. <laughs> 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 Yeah, he wasn't with us for personal reasons. Man, another big out. game. She talked about uh, McConkie's <coughs> continued contributions from off the back. Yeah, what were, you, were you asking about that? If you can just expound on his play today. Awesome. You know, great competitor. Uh, made, we finally completed a post for the first time all year that, that he drove in there and, and I went up made a play. And I thought, well, I had a chance for one early. I thought the guy might have got there early, but we didn't get the call. And then Lad hit the one later. He, he made some people miss. I mean, the one play. We didn't block the guy. I mean, he threw a bubble out there and, and didn't block it right. And uh, Lad made him miss. And big play of the game is playmaker. Players make plays, and he did. He said he hit at 18 miles an hour. Is what he was told. Yeah, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. I don't think he hit 18 miles an hour. All was his bike or a car. <laughs> would, you, would you say this would be your toughest test of the season? They're all tough, bro. They're all tough. There's no difference. We talked all week about what you learned about your team last year when you guys played Missouri. What do you feel like you learned about your team in this year's game? Well, the same things. Um, we got a disciplined football team. They do what we ask. Uh, we don't get a lot of stupid penalties. Uh, they, they believe in each other. They believe that if they don't win the last moment, they'll win the next moment. And if you win enough moments, you, 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 you can be pretty good. And uh, we won enough moments tonight. What's the key to playing good defense in the red zone? Stop the run. If you can stop the run, you're going to make them do what? Throw. If you have to throw with less area, because there's a back line back there. They don't give you seven to catch it behind it. So you can sit on the house and squat on things. It forces you to run the ball. If you can't, it shows up big time in the red area. If you can't stop it, it shows up big time in the red area. I just wanted to ask about Marcus and his status after he was shaking up after that play. If you, if you could have gone back in and you needed him, would he have gone back in? You know, I don't even know the answer to that. I didn't realize that he didn't go back in. I remember the play you're talking about, but I don't. I didn't get any uh, updates and uh, don't know. And I think he's okay. He was talking after the play, but I can't confirm that. How was Missouri different from last year to this year? I mean, obviously, really good team both times. Yeah, very similar. A lot of the same offensive plays. He went out and hired an offensive coordinator and brought some more wrinkles in. They're big defensively. Number six is a just grown man and uh, one of the hardest people to block in our league. Really good. They have a good football team. They play. They play sound, good. Everything. Special teams. They're sound. It's not like you go in going, "Ooh, I got them here." You're, you're, you're trying to create an advantage, and it's hard to get a great field goal kicker. Coming down, coming down the stretch, do you feel like you guys are playing y'all's best ball? Um, you know, in November. I don't know. I mean, I think we've gotten better. I think we got to continue to improve. I thought we had a great week of practice, Florida. I thought we had a really good week of practice this week. Um, you know, I expect it to play well. And, Sure, you could have has a big day. What about the I mean concerns about the running game or certainly <clears throat> tippy cat the way that guy ran and they blocked him? Yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a great he's, he's a great runner, but they got a great scheme. <laughs> I mean yeah. they, they, they know when to run the ball. They're not running the ball into loaded boxes and, and they do a great job for the stretch game. I mean they run the stretch as good as anybody in college football and uh, and they, they, they hurt us with it. So can, can, pop, it. can pop the plan of guys? Uh, I don't think so. I, I don't know that. See, I, mean, I just got a text with the x-ray on it, so it's one of those that uh, I doubt that it's going to be able to. I don't, I don't know that. Some big catches from Oscar. Just what do you feel like he brings to this offense? Great kid, great competitor, locks his tail off, works hard, made catches down the field today. That's what we were recruited for. I mean, Oscar is a good football player. Coach, we expect the red zone package to run back with him. Well, we saw a little bit thought we liked, and I uh, thought we liked it. I, I told Mike and him that, that he, he, you know, he gives us an extra dynamic there, and, and we, didn't, we didn't execute it very good. It wasn't his fault, and uh, I was glad they used it because I, I, I trust Brock. I think he's, uh, he brings an extra dynamic to the game. How did Dom handle the week, and how do you think it, what it meant to him to get in the end zone against his old team? Oh, it would have been a lot to him. There was a ton of players out there hugging him afterwards. He's such a great teammate and competitor that I know it meant a lot to him, but it meant a lot to them too. Uh, that can be emotional, and we talked about, you know, 
two things that cause you to lose discipline are loss of emotions and loss of fatigue. And you don't let fatigue set in because you lose discipline. You don't let emotions set in because you lose discipline. And he didn't do that today. And I was proud of him. Let's take two more questions. Coach, we were disappointed right before half the two minutes left. Y'all didn't take advantage of the opportunity to maybe go and score some more points right before half time. Absolutely not. Uh, we didn't let them take advantage of it either. So you know, if we hurry up and punt it to them, they got more time. So the goal is to get a first down and score. If you don't do that, the goal is don't give them the ball. So my disappointment, we didn't quite convert it, yeah. But we, you know, he didn't call timeout either because he's sitting there thinking, oh, Lord, if I call timeout, I'm going to help him. And uh, then we keep the ball to him, and, and they didn't uh, they didn't take advantage of it either. Uh, the same for going after you decided not to kind of go for it, how you feel about it? Which time? And at the end of the first half? They were moving it at the, I think, the two minute mark he's talking about where we, 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 we stalled out. But I'll be honest with you, I don't. I, I got to make decisions based on what wins games, not, not what wins spreads. Thank you. <laughs>